So you just started a new business and you realize so many other people have the same business. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna be competitive and I'm gonna show you how. Keep watching. Hi, my name is Deanna and welcome to my channel, Let's Get Wealthy Together. Today we're gonna be talking about, you got it, competition. And there's so many different reasons why. Some people face a competitor and they just basically chicken out, but we're not doing it. And I'm gonna tell you why here with a few tips and things that I have done to make me to be successful in business. So go ahead and like this video. Please share it if you find the information in it beneficial to you and you want someone else to also learn, okay? So let's start with you started a business. Now you could have maybe watched a YouTube channel and someone gave you a list of different businesses that you can start that are considered to be profitable. All these trendy things, things like selling hair or becoming a photographer or starting some kind of store and you decided to jump in and then you jumped in and you realize a lot of people are doing some of the same things. How can I be competitive? Well, I want to start by saying that I don't necessarily agree that you should jump on a bandwagon to do a particular type of trendy business just because it's the thing to do at this particular time. I do, however, believe that if you have a calling for a type of business, you have a particular talent for a type of business that you can nurture and grow, that you should not be worried about competition because there are plenty of people that are jumping on the bandwagon. And you know what? If you're not... If you don't have a real interest in a particular type of business, you won't continue it. Some of these businesses are going to take years to build, you know, away with that thinking that things happen overnight, that things happen in six months, sometimes a year. Sometimes it could be several years that you have to constantly chip at and work at to build a particular business. But in that, you have with that tenacity comes your love for the business, and you're not gonna get out of it simply because you face certain type of challenges and things like that. So the first thing is to be sure that it's a calling. Make sure that it's something that you're good at, something that you know how to do, something that comes easily to you, you know, something that's a part of your profession. You know, it could even be something as, okay, so you do wanna sell, um, it cinches hair for a living and you're some type of cosmetologist that's in that business already or you just have a love for hair altogether or you want to do nails and you've been studying nails for a long time and you know you picked up how to do you taught yourself or you went to cosmetology school and you just learned the trade you know those are things that you should be going after and if you feel called to it then by all means continue to be consistent at it don't give up it's going to be some hard times. It's going to be some days we just don't feel like it. And as with anything, with school, with the working now and in relationships, there's always a moment where you just want to be like, oh, man, is this for me? I'm tired. I don't feel like it today. But strive on. Take a day off. If you need to take a day off, take a day off. You know, if you need to take off a couple of days, take a couple of days, but always come back. Because if your ultimate goal is to be successful, then nothing worth having comes to you easily and freely and without some work being put into it, okay? Um, also, you should be knowledgeable of your competitors. Like, you know, you should know who you're up against. So I was having a conversation with a friend the other day and she was made a comment about <clears throat> one of my clients that has a particular product that she's selling that's pretty popular right now. A lot of people are doing the same thing. The difference is my, my client is an expert. She has different assortment of degrees and all this experience where a lot of people don't, you know, they're just jumping in it and they're just, you know, making their version of this particular product, but they don't have any real meat in it. And she does, and she's been doing it a whole lot longer than these people. And so my response to someone saying that everybody's doing it, just because everyone is doing it doesn't mean that I won't one day reach a reach a level where I'm no longer mom and pop. And if you know what mom and pop is, that's like the lower level, just beginning out of your kitchen, out of your basement type of businesses and most businesses start there. Most businesses start at a mom and pop level. There's nothing wrong with that. That's very um credible in today's day. 
Um, however, at some point, to you know, if you want to reach certain levels of success, you go above that. You know, you may end up having a space that you work out of, or or that you you know you or you may hire um, someone to dispense or to make or whatever your products yourself. So there's always going to be a ton of people at the mom and pop level. That's just it. it. There's always going to be a ton of people at that level. What you have to do is reach the point where you're above that, where you're a step above the mom and pop level. Maybe you've gotten space. Maybe you, you've ramped up your customer. Maybe you have um, even gained a following or customers that are loyal to you and only to you and they figure you have the best product. You've proved that to them. You're stepping above the mom and pop level. You have to be you have to be knowledgeable about who your competitors are. If you have mom and pop level competitors, then know who they are. You know that, you know, Samantha down the street is selling the same thing that you're selling and blah, blah, blah. Know who she is, have a good idea of what her price points are and be able to, you know, go toe to toe with her. But at the same time, understand your differences. And I'm looking down because I have some notes. <laughs> but understand your differences. You know, in the marketing world, there's this thing called a SWOT analysis. SWOT analysis is S-W-O-T. And it's an analysis of your business in comparison to a competitor. So SWOT stands for your strength, your weakness, your opportunities, and your threat. So in this, you're looking at yourself and say, hey, and the S for my, you know, business would be, you would name a strength. I do this well, or I come to customers and give them this particular thing and nobody else, you know, is really doing that. Or your weakness could be, um, oh, I really could work on my correspondence with customers. I know that Keisha down the street is, is shipping things the same day if you're at a mom and pop level. <laughs> um, opportunity could be, but I know that um, I am working on this certification and I'm going to be soon into stores once I do this profile and people can find me, you know, that's an opportunity. And then a threat could be anything like something that you do wrong that you need to improve upon that you know someone else is doing a whole lot better or it could be something that could threaten your business. Like if you hold a license for something and, um, you know, it's becoming time to pay that license and you may not have the money right away, you know, just list out your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. Um, the main thing is to stay in your lane. Run your race. Don't be so consumed and worried about what everybody else is doing. You need to have blinders on. But it's at the same time, you know, glance, make sure to check out what they're doing. You know, know what's happening, but don't be so focused on them that you can't stay focused on your particular goal and you can't move forward. And another thing, pricing is very important when it comes to competitors. That means you have to always be the same price as them. Doesn't necessarily mean you have to be lower or more expensive. What you have to be is competitive. So you may consider yourself a luxury brand. Um, and in that, you need to provide things that are considered luxurious. It could be anything from the packaging, the colors that you use, quality of materials that you use to make whatever you're making or whatever it is. It needs to be luxurious in order for it to make sense for you to charge a certain price point and compare yourself to the other luxurious brands. Or if it's um, bargain, you know, and it's, you know, you're, you're cutting corners so that you can make things less expensive for people, not cheap, less expensive. Don't do cheap. We're going to do less expensive. <laughs> cheap is never a good thing. Less expensive is inexpensive. So if you haven't have things that are considered inexpensive um, so that you can come in a, a lower price point, be able to provide information and to show why it's inexpensive while at the same time being of great value. You always want to maintain your value. Know who your customers are. Uh, if you're going to be a compet, if you're going to think about your competition in regards to your customers, it may be times that you share customers and this particular customer is just looking for the best deal. You know, I just want to pay whatever's on sale. If it's for sale on this side, I get it from Deanna. If it's not on sale with her, I get it from Keisha, you know, whatever it is. But at some point, 
uh, you will create loyalty with certain customers because of the value that you provide. And there will be some people that are going to always going to bounce between brands. But if you think about the things that you purchase, you know, when you go to the bread aisle, it's a ton of different breads, which you normally go to the one that you like. Why? Because of the value. You like it. You like how it tastes. It's the best for you. That doesn't mean that all the other breads are bad. It's just not the one for you. Same thing with hair, same thing with photography, same thing with anything. Pretty much everything has an plan B <laughs> for the most part, unless it's something that, you know, is only one thing and that would be considered a monopoly. But if it's, if it has competition, there's always enough for all of us to eat. Remember that there's always enough for us to eat. There's not as if there's this one set of customers that's only going to buy this one set of thing from, you know, one person. I got to be worried about bringing this customer over here. So I'm going to lower my prices to be 50% off every other week so that I can get customers. And another thing about that, sometimes when you constantly lower your prices, it creates a perception in the customer's mind that I'm not going to buy this week because I know next week is going to be on sale. And they'll always be waiting on the sale always waiting on the sale. You know, if you're going to have a sale, let it be something kind of spontaneous or around a holiday or something like that. But uh, I wouldn't get in the habit of always marking things down because at that point, people are going to expect for you to bring it down. And you're going to have, if you decide not to have a sale for a month, your sales are going to be what? gone no sales for a whole month is what you're going to have if you continuously have sales all the time so but if that's your thing to have sales all the time then my, by all means if that's your um pitch then cool you know just as long as you're making some sort of profit you know don't have sales and going into the red that doesn't make any sense. so and the next thing is to brand accordingly uh brand as in the look, the feel, the experience, all of that that you give your customers, make sure that it's based upon you and the things that you want to provide for your customers so that they can take that and they can become what we want, a loyal customer. So um, these are my tips for the day for um, being competitive in any marketplace. This can apply to pretty much any platform, any kind of um, service or product where you can be competitive. But my main thing I want you to remember is stay in your lane, concentrate on you, do the best you can do, provide the best service, and you're going to be just fine. Okay. All right. Please like and subscribe and share this video if you found it to be useful to you. Okay. Thank you and have a good one.